Duck and Dukes. But I keep telling you, said Duck, there are no Dukes. They were fine and stately, but they have all been scrapped. Peter Sam goggled in horror. This is dreadful, he wailed. Mr. Percival said the owner said the Duke said he was coming to our century to open our extension around the lake. And now he's scrapped, and Scalois and Renéas' birthday will be spoiled. Oh dear, oh dear. He bustled away with his empty coaches to tell his bad news. I think, said Scarloe, that duck was pulling your wheels. No, Scarloe, he was quite serious. He always just like that, chuckled Scarloe, but no one agreed, and they argued so loudly that Mr. Percival came to stop their noise. They told him about duck, but he paid no attention. I have no time for his nonsense now, he snapped. There is a change in tomorrow's work. Scarloe, you will meet the Duke at eleven o'clock instead of ten-thirty and he hurried away. If there's a duke, said Duncan. But they were all too tired to argue any more. They spent a gloomy night, but cheered up next morning when the cleaners greeted the birthday engines with an all-metal band. Driver Fireman joined in, and even Mr. Percival banged a metal dish, as loud as anyone. The engines punctured the music with their wheels. The owner laughed and held his ears. Presently, he looked at his watch. That is enough, he ordered. So Rusty, Sir Handel, and Duncan went at once to find their coaches. Visitors crowded the big station. They wanted to go places along the line to watch the celebrations. Peter, Sam, and Renéas had carefully practiced their parts. Passengers in Agnes, Ruth, Lucy, Jemima, and Beatrice all wore clothes of 1865. Reneas had pulled them behind Peter Sam's television train, not too close and not too far away so that the camera could take their pictures. Visitors waved as they went by. And at last, they reached a special sidings near the extension, where they settled down to wait. Listen, said Peter Sam at last. Here is Scarloe. They are cheering him. Good answered Reneas. Perhaps that will make up for his disappointment over the Duke. Scarloe wasn't disappointed at all. I have brought the Duke. I have brought the Duke. I have brought the Duke, he puffed, and triumphantly came to a stand between the two engines. A distinguished-looking man stepped out, climbed to Scarloe's footplate, and drove him on the new line around the lake and back again. Then, standing on Scarloe's front puffer beam, he said, Ladies, gentlemen, and engines, I have pleasure in declaring your lovely lakeside loop line now open. Peter Sam could bear it no longer. Excuse me, Sir Duke, sir, he burst out. Are you real? There was a shocked silence. The Duke smiled. Scarloe said you had been listening to Duck, he answered. Duck thinks dukes were great western engines, but dukes are really people. I am happy to assure you, Peter Sam, that I am real life duke. I will give duck dukes, muttered Peter Sam, but he was sternly hushed. The duke turned to the owner. I congratulate you, sir, on your remarkable railway. It must be a record indeed to have two locomotives in regular service, and both are one hundred years old. Long life, then and good running to Scarloe and Reneas, your famous old engines. The cheering and clapping died away. Speech! shouted someone, and the cry was taken up. Go on, Reneas, whispered the owner. So rather nervously, the old engine began. Thank you, your grace, and everyone for your kind wishes. You have given us both a lovely 100th birthday, but... Your Grace, Scarloe and I aren't the only record engines. We have got twin brothers. Talon and Dolcock were built at the same time as us, so they are 102, and they are still at work. Their railway is at Towin in Wales. Please go and see them, Your Grace and everybody, and wish them many happy returns from Scarloe and Renes, their little old twins. <laughs>